Okay, we'll see an example on uh, consuming the web service, a uh, Google web service. Oh, getting closed. Let me open. I'll also see what is my registered API key. Okay, so I have my application already registered and uh, this is my API key. So if you want to generate your own API key, the instruction is there, you can create. So this is my API key. I'm going to reverse your coding. I'm going to call this UR. Okay, so this is the block uh, where I get a new location. So a location listener, whenever the user makes a move, a location changed uh, is called. This method has a object called location that has the latitude and longitude values which is coming from the specific location. So that has to be sent to or uh, called through a HTTP GET http get because it is looking like the url the values are directly sent through the url itself if the values is not sent through url there is another protocol there is another method is called post so it is like a form post that also we can do using http post but this particular url is uh, looking like http get Okay, mm, I already post the values in notification. Let me first run it because I modified the emulator. This is a emulator version running Okay, when I call uh, start me, it is ready to listen the location, but uh, since it is emulator, no values have been sent, so I am going pushing a value. So I get a notification ticker coming on the top, which something rolls, that is called notification ticker. If you see uh, the logo and the value which is I am typing and this is the content, content info, everything I have uh, called in the builder itself and a builder is also have a pending intent attached pending intent an intent is pending for a user interaction mean uh, a view is being created but it doesn't come to a foreground mean your intent is pending when the intent will be respected of course when you touch for example uh, let me close the application then it will be appropriate so a pending intent is here when I click on it it brings up the particular intent into foreground so I have my builder with the pending intent also attached pending intent is pretty simple you need to initialize using the pending intent object and get activity if you are triggering an activity make sure it is get activity and which activity you want to bring into a foreground foreground of course that may be a launcher activity itself uh, result code sorry request code which can be captured in on activity result and if your intent comes with some data you can capture them in the UI so this is for notification instead of uh, this one I would like to display the address 
either directly into a UI or maybe the drug notification itself. So before that, let me first write an async, task, async task block so that uh, I can handle HTTP calls. do some small changes here class I am creating because uh, it is called my web service here I am going to write Okay, so here we should be very careful what we are going to use. The third one stream. Make it as URLs. So string string. This is also string. be void as of now we are not going to use this time I keep it as a string because uh, the result is going to be of type JSON which is of course a string uh, kind of combination of a string duly uh, encoded as a JSON format so this is your async task So HTTP create the uh, instance of HTTP client default HTTP client so this will get a default HTTP client of your application so remember it is Apache package Apache is actually is, Apache is an open source community they work on various uh, open source project seems to be Android has got a HTTP package from Apache itself so uh, maybe any version of Apache package for example for further example on uh, Apache HTTP packages you can see this is where Apache is actively developing the HTTP client there should be a uh, download section so various uh, the particular jar file java archive files may be available if you want to use uh, generic because right now apache has released even uh, http client 4.4 but i'm not sure what android uses which version android uses may be out, outdated also but if you want to use the latest one you can download it and put the jar file uh, in the lips folder we can use the latest Apache HTTP client as well. We will see one small example uh, using that as well also. Because if you want to upload a picture, 
you want to send the picture from your phone to a server uh, the existing HTTP client what Android gives inbuilt is not much capable so for that example I will go ahead and download a jar here and I will attach and how I can handle multi uh, I mean uh, for example uh, multi formatted form submissions so it can also have a text as well as bitmap information such as picture so but anyway so I would like to tell the HTTP client which is something an open source product and which is uh, being added to Android from Apache open source community. If you see the path, it, it looks like that. And here, so this is a HTTP client object. Mean right now, uh, you may imagine a browser with address bar is ready for you. So where you will type. So this is the place where you enter your URL so this particular address bar is a HTTP client for you so like that you may imagine so you have an object called HTTP client which can do a HTTP get or HTTP post request so HTTP post also I can use but uh, this example the URL looks like a get so I hope you know what is the difference between HTTP get and post we, sh we should have discussed that uh, in our HTML session also so we may be knowing it but at this point what we need to understand HTTP GET may not be a secure one because the information sent through the URL itself whereas HTTP POST considered as a secure one because the data does not uh, whatever data which is traveled through HTTP does not uh, it's not visible on the URL but uh, if you look at the Google web service the URL they are sending so for again anything followed by the question mark mean it is the place where the attribute and key value or key value pairs are traveling so if you look at it it is looking like a HTTP get but I can also use HTTP post also URL or URL okay whatever it is I can give a URL so in this case the URL so it is a variable argument it's better to wrap it inside a for loop otherwise I can this will make sure HTTP URI request okay but before that I'll uh, uh, I will bind it uh, with the for example this class right now in a different web service because where my uh, latitude and longitude coming in the different service so this is different that is different we'll have to link them but well let us complete this first I'm going to capture the response so HTTP response directly pass it no problem needs a try catch block because chances are there uh, after parsing that chances are there your internet may be broken or the result may not be coming as expected now I need to build a 
remember this particular block is inside in a async task in a do in background method mean it is in a different thread different process so depending on this uh, particular time frame it takes it will be delayed or it may take slightly time so we have already put it inside a thread so how long it takes we don't have any problem here so I'm assuming the response has come now start reading the response for that I need a buffered reader an object which can read the information line by line for example you have received a kind of a text file from top to bottom you have to read it and uh, save it to a either a string or string builder so we can use it for our further execution new buffered reader size also will specify that will be good so convert the input stream response get entity get content I remember the stream reader remember the data may have come as a byte or any other information so that is a streamable format for example uh, if you are playing a video through an URL not entire video is loaded in your browser and then only you are seeing that uh, some sort of small amount of buffer is more than enough to play your videos nowadays HTML players or even if you see the YouTube also when a streamed content is ready for a playback it's not necessary the entire uh, I mean the file should be loaded when a few lines of byte is ready we can start playing them we can start reading them so whatever response has come it is kind of a st uh, stream reader so it may be coming so as it comes I am starting getting the particular content and I am saving them in a buffered reader character set to you may give UTF-8 which is a default by or you can if you do not want to specify you can even uh, use that here itself this also you can do but I prefer to have a encoding the size is recommended to have a 2 MB because that's what Android uh, Uh, restricts the maximum size of a data you know object so any string or anything you are using Android does not allow uh, the particular object size exceed 2 MB so I'm um, it is better to force it whatever stream is loaded first load just to maximum 2 MB of data alone not load everything so input stream uh, just it will load 2 MB first and then another 2 MB available it will load uh, so until it reaches to the end of the particular string so now our buffer reader is ready string is null we can use a for while block so we haven't been using it a dummy string it reads line by line until the particular line reaches to null Builder is uh, good for this 
string which need a concatenation instead of uh, using a string itself I can use a string builder to concatenate whatever incoming values builder append line we want to add a new line character that also you can add that is recommended so line by line it will read so a new line has come in it will put in the backslash this line okay let me verify so now the builder would be populating when builder is done with that our string is ready We'll see what the response comes, then we'll decide it. So you are all ready. So let me put a so when things are ready. Otherwise, I'll do string it. Should get rid of it. So, when this particular block is executed, I should see the result and should be printed in a log. Okay. Remember, I have declared the async task inside a different uh, class, so I need to connect it. What I can do is start off I can call this way. So in this case, this particular class, my location service parent class is called my web service. That my web service in fact is coming from service. So it is also a service. Only benefit I can reuse it anywhere if I have a multiple services running. Remember, I slightly change the uh, parent child relationship. So, this particular my location service is of type called my web service. So, if you look at my web service, it is nothing but it's of type service. The benefit of having this one, I can access a public methods or anything available through this way. Just wiring it to I'm not writing anything for this class, just I'm stopping here itself. where the location comes here so that's the name of the class it's called my web request 
I can easily access because the parent class right now my web service or any methods or classes defined there I can access. Need to give a URL. Let me see the so let me copy this one. I have to modify this block. It is latitude, comma, longitude. So every time a new location comes, this URL will be called and the API key I need to copy from this place. My API key. So whenever a web request is initialized, it goes with a new URL. Remember this block, depending on the situation, may be called number of times. So may not be advisable to keep it here because the location listener we have set both the parameters 0 0 so as you make even a small movement a new location will come which will in turn call the web URLs maybe a network consuming one but for testing we can okay so we are not going to mind about it because we only want to test it later I may add a small timer instead of depending on this so every five minutes uh, every three minutes it make a request and find the address so that will be uh, least overloading one because every time accessing internet remember if the user is using 3g data he may run away the network um, the balance so we have to be very careful everywhere the data costs slightly higher so you should be very careful on using that right now you are using internet so make sure you add the permission I already added. Okay, fine. So, whenever a result is available, I'll get a callback. Get result. Sorry, I'm writing the wrong place. Seems to be. This method has been defined in this parent class called my web service. It's nothing but an empty class, but it will give uh, it will fetch me the result which is coming from on post executive. So I have a result coming here. So I will be thinking about how to use that because I would like to first check uh, the incoming data type. As JSON because it should come as a JSON I need to see whether the value uh, response coming or not if not we'll have to debug that and then we think about displaying that in fact I'm trying it new so I'm also not sure whether the data will fetch a result or not <laughs> I'll keep start so that it will be ready to get a location I'm going to DDMS. I'm going to press send. I think some sort of it's coming, but uh, something request denied. Your site IP is not authorized to use this API key. Okay, but uh, maybe my API key is wrong or what? But at least I'm getting a response. That at least. Uh, the positive side so I'm getting a response from Google it means my HTTP request has been sent at least somehow it finds my HTTP request comes with the wrong API key so how it is possible 
I have used a sync task to make a request. First, I make sure HTTP client from a G default HTTP client, I get object of uh, HTTP client and I also make another object called HTTP get. HTTP get contains the URL whatever I'm calling and that makes a uh, from the HTTP client, I expect a HTTP response by duly attaching the HTTP get nothing but the URL. So it means your address bar right now contains a URL as you hit enter it will fetch the response so the response has come the response is uh, uh, every uh, stream is taken in the buffer reader so as the stream enters in the buffer reader being read and finally that has been attached to a string builder because every line we are reading and finally the string builder contains a fully qualified JSON or anything which is coming that finally attached to a string result which is actually it is returned so whatever it returns it will be captured in on post execute so on post execute further calls a method called get result even though we do not have an active block here i may have an abstract also abstract method also there but still make it is yeah so i'm implementing here so the result may lack it. So let us first identify why the response has is denied. I mean the, so right now my package name com my web service I hope I have added already it is there. Try that uh, URL is character wrong. It looks fine. I'll do one thing, I would like to verify my latitude longitude pairs are going correct or wrong. So I'll do one thing string URL. You see the URL is correct or wrong. Hit start. Now I need to push the location. I think this is a URL again. I'm getting an error, but let me see the URL. So it calls maps with the latitude, longitude, and the key, which is working great. I'm suspecting this block maybe this URI looking like it's not URI. looks for a universal resource identifier I remember so you need to convert 
the incoming string type URL into URI. Okay, I'm correct. Catch blocks are there. Let me try that. IP or mobile applications, my certificate fingerprint value just got changed. I don't know. Investigate it later. I'm going to emulate it instead of waiting for this to fix. And this is what I am trying to give us a fix for you. on the same txt file and put it in my web server
Oh, I don't form it is correct. 